So in this video, I'll be doing an unboxing setup and review of the Blockstream Jade. The Jade is a low cost, open source Bitcoin hardware wallet. In my previous video here, I ran through how to build your own uh, DIY Jade device. And in this video, I'll just be looking at the retail offering from Blockstream. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. I just bought this device at retail, you know, no freebies here. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is what came in the package. Basically, you've got the Jade hardware device here, and they also just threw two seed QR cards into it. So let's open this up. Okay, so this is everything that comes in the box. You've just got the standard sort of getting started guide. Uh, you've got the standard recovery sheet for the words, the seed QRs that these were just thrown in outside of the box, as I showed you before a nice USB-C cable. And if we just have a look at the device itself, we can see there's a USB-C port on the bottom. This here is actually a rocker switch, which it just goes up and down. And we've got a button here on the side, camera on the back, and also this big square button on the front here. So let's just guess, this is just like an M5 stack, and this is the power button. There we go, Blockstream Jade. For setup instructions, continue to Blockstream Jade. All right, actually, let's plug that into charge as well. Actually, one thing I will say is this USB-C cable they've given is actually a nice, generous length. They haven't cheaped out with a short one. Let's actually just do the initialization on here. So let's see. So this rocker, I'm guessing, will drive the menu. Yep. So we let's just say we want a new wallet. We'll use this middle button to confirm. Yep. New 12. Let's see, can we get a 24 word seed? Yes, we can. Now, one thing I will say at this point, if you haven't given the choice between a 12 or a 24 word seed, I do think it is worth going 24, just because they have uh, more entropy in there, so more security. Uh, they have a much stronger, more robust checksum, and they only take a little bit longer to actually set up, and you'll only be doing this once. So uh, if you get the choice, going for 24 words is totally worth it. That said, 12 is fine, and for the sake of speed in this video, I'll go with 12. We are just gonna write these words down here. Again, it's better to use a pencil if you've got one. I only have a pen on hand. And look, we'll also just put a line through that because we're not using those 12. So let's see, we're confirming word six. Ugh, so we're only verifying four out of 12 words. Do we want to protect the wallet with a passphrase? Well, I'm just going to say no for now and see how to turn that on later. So we'll just say no. How do you want to connect your Jade to green, USB or Bluetooth? Uh, let's just give Bluetooth a go, actually. Select your Jade on the Green Companion app to pair it. Okay, so at this point, we are going to have to install Blockstream Green. So, let's do that. Yep, so let's install that. Okay, so let's say we have a Blockstream. We'll give Bluetooth permissions. Say, allow. Yep. Oh, there it is. And we can actually see this serial number here matches that there. So. All right, let's just start with single sig Bitcoin. I agree. Bluetooth pairing request. So we'll say pair. Okay, so we should see that code on the phone matches this code over here, which it does. So we'll put the rocker onto confirm and say yes. And we'll say pair over here. New firmware available. Sure. So we'll say yes. All right, so that is updated, but it's also wiped itself. Oh, well, so we're going to select recover. We'll say we'll do the 12 words. At least all 12 words will get verified this way. Ah, okay. So now that I've updated the firmware, I've got both USB, Bluetooth, and now QR option. The QR option wasn't there before. But for the sake of simplicity for now, we'll just stick with Bluetooth. Okay, so we'll just select the app. We'll select single SIG Bitcoin again. Ah, here we go. So we've got to set a pin. Okay, so here is our account. So if I hit receive, and I can say verify on device. Oh yes, there's the address just there. I can say, yes, that matches. So let's just send some Bitcoin there. Oh yeah, there we go. That's showed up straight away unconfirmed, which is fantastic. While that's confirming, let's just have a look over here on the device at the settings. So, if we're in a session, what's in there? Oh, okay, so session, that's basically 
talking about it being paired with the phone right now. So we go into options, what's that? Yep, wallet. Okay, so we can export the XPUB. Oh, register multi-sig, okay, oh, that's nice. So we can register multi-sig accounts. And BIP85, oh, that's excellent. So we can create extra seeds all from our root seed on this one, which is great, especially if you're someone who has multiple devices. These are really good features. So let's just go back. So what happens if we go into device? Power off timeout, five minutes, Bluetooth. So we'll just go in there, change its status and pairing. Yep. Factory reset, not going to worry about that. So if we go into advanced. So if we go into OTP, the other thing that's very cool here is we can actually use this device for one time codes using the TOTP standard. So this is the standard that you would generally use for things like your Authenticator app on Android or iOS or that sort of thing. So basically a thing where your app will generate a new code, you know, every 30 seconds. Okay. And wallet arrays pin. This is basically like a duress pin. It'll wipe the device and just show internal error. That's a good message. Hmm. Okay, so Let's have a look at QR mode and specifically first we're going to look at QR pin unlock. Now you might be wondering why you need to use some sort of fancy QR code workflow to be able to unlock the device when using an air gap mode. And the reason for that is that the Blockstream Jade is actually quite unique uh, as far as hardware wallets on the market go. Most hardware wallets encrypt your wallet data just locally on the hardware wallet itself and your pin is used to decrypt that data so that you can use it when you unlock the device. Whereas with the Blockstream Jade, you need not only your pin, but also a little bit of random data from the Blockstream servers that is used together to decrypt your wallet. It's kind of like a distributed version of the SD protect feature that the Trezor has, except rather than it being stored on an SD card that goes in your device, it is stored on Blockstream servers. It's a very clever solution to boost the physical security of the device without needing a secure element. We'll just go to blockstream.com slash pin QR. So basically we are gonna say, yep, we've done that. So now we enter our device pin on here. There we go. And now we are gonna scan that animated QR code with the camera. There we go. Okay, so now the phone has a big QR code on it that we will scan with this device here. And now we have a new QR code over here. So we'll say next on the phone, and now we scan this QR code on the Jade. Okay. And then finally, we scan this QR code from the phone. There we go. And now the device is unlocked. So I'll say done over here on the phone. And now I have to use a QR compatible companion app. So in this case, I will just use Blue Wallet. So what we're going to do over here is we are going to go into options, we go into wallet, and we are going to go XPUB export. Now, um, this is the single SIG, and I'll just show you what the options mean on here. So basically we've got two options. So we can have native SegWit or wrapped SegWit, and this wrapped SegWit one is called a legacy SegWit in the green wallet app. But anyway, so we'll just put that on native SegWit because that was the one that still had some funds in it that I sent there before. And now we'll go over here to blue wallet, we'll say add, we'll just say import wallet down the bottom there, and we'll say scan or import a file. And I'll just scan the QR code straight off the Jade, and it will, in a second, discover, there it is. So that is the wallet there. So to do a transaction, this works just like any QR based wallet. So over here on the phone, we'll just say send. Yes, we do want to enable offline signing. Send it to the tip account. And I'll just say I want to send max, use full balance. Yep. And I'll say next. And there is the transaction as a QR code. So over here on the J, we'll say QR scan. And we will just scan this QR code off the phone. There we go. 
and this is the transaction data. So this is just like when we were doing it with the normal app. So I'll just say yes, that's correct. Yes, fee is correct. And there is our signed transaction. So I'll just say scan signed a transaction. Now with the there we go. So that is the transaction and I could verify it if I want to again on Coinbin, but I'll just say send now. And there we go. That transaction is sent. Alright, so this thing I'll show you is scan seed QR. And basically what this seed QR mode means is rather than just storing our recovery seed uh, as words that we have to type into the device, we can actually store it on a QR code that we can just scan with this to log in instantly. The disadvantage of that is obviously that you need to have uh, a copy of your seed just you know lying around rather than having it encrypted and secured on the device. Um, but if you are worried about that, you can also add a BIP39 passphrase to secure uh, this seed QR. If you didn't create a seed QR sheet when you initially created the recovery seed, what we can do is just go in the options and say recovery phrase login, because that's what this is. It says, do you want to temporarily log in using recovery phrase? This doesn't affect your pin or saved wallet, if any. So we'll say yes. And then what we want to do here is actually say advanced. And then we want to choose, we have a 12 word recovery seed. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to enter this recovery seed into this Jade, even though it's already there. And then it's going to allow us to generate a seed QR that we can transcribe onto this. Okay, so basically you can see here now it's saying, do you want to export your recovery phrase as a compact seed QR? So we are actually going to say yes. And now we are going to say next because we want to draw the seed QR. So that's what it's going to look like in general. And this is a 12 word seed one. So we're going to use the 12 word card that came with the device. And we're going to say begin. And basically you can see here it has the grid and these grids correspond to these numbers up here. So we'll just scroll across and go A2. So basically we need to color in these squares so that the pattern here is reproduced over here. Okay, so we'll say done. Now we are just gonna scan it to verify it. There we go. QR code verified. And the good thing here, actually, even if you do make a small mistake on this uh, seed QR sheet, don't just chuck it out, uh, get all the way to the end and verify. There is some error detection and correction actually built into these QR codes. So basically I can kick it off in QR mode, just scanning a seed QR. That's in QR mode, just like I had it before when I did the QR pin unlock. And I'll just show you one last thing for seed QR, and for that I've gone and wiped the device. Even without initializing the device with anything, you can actually use it in a fully stateless mode by just choosing advanced and going into recovery phrase login. And basically we can just scan the QR code just like we did before and actually really hold it a good distance back before it scans properly. There we go. So we can actually just use this device uh, in a fully stateless mode. Now, I have to say I'm really impressed with the Blockstream Jade. It not only does a really good job of catering to beginners in terms of just the basic, you know, Bluetooth or USB functionality, works nicely on a mobile, their partner app is really simple and easy to use, and all of that sort of good stuff. But it also will cater to power users. You know, it more advanced features like uh, stateful multi-sig that is saved on the device, the ability to be used in a fully uh, QR code based sort of air gapped mode uh, as well as the ability to run fully statelessly if you really want to do the whole seed QR thing. You know this is a device that is good not only for beginners but also for advanced users. The way they've done their pin is also very clever in that while the device doesn't have a secure element uh, they're sort of splitting up with the pin locally on the device and some extra data you know stored remotely on a server uh, gives it a similar level of physical security as a device that would have a secure element. You know even if someone could get the device, uh, dump the full contents of it onto their PC, you know, they wouldn't be able to decrypt that wallet.
And the thing that impresses me most of all with this is they've done it with a fully open source approach, uh, not only with the software, but also it made it really easy to just DIY your own device. Never mind the fact they're offering this at one of the most competitive prices for a hardware wallet in the market. I've added the Jade onto my website and you can even just see from the summary scores here that the Jade does particularly well, especially given its price. And if you want a detailed feature breakdown, uh, you can click through to the spreadsheet and you can see all of its features compared with a lot of other devices on the market. If you think a Blockstream Jade would be useful to help boost the security of your setup and want to help me out in the process, I've got an affiliate link for it in the description. If you've got any questions about the device or any experiences using it that you want to share, just leave a reply in the comments. I do my best to reply to all of them. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.